Hello everyone. Welcome to 360 on History. Please check out the website 360onhistory.com and join us on social media. Now that it has become painfully clear that we are in the Anthropocene era, having changed the face of this planet both in terms of the environment and climate. Many of us are trying to make changes to the way we live and consume by eating green. While many of the changes we make to our lifestyles will be beneficial, it is worth it to look at some others that may not be. After all, it is always good to get the complete data and make informed choices instead of unquestioningly accepting the latest eco trend because it makes us feel good. The eating green or the vegan food fad is the one I want to talk about here. The eating green or the vegan food fad is the one I want to talk about here specifically non-dairy milk products There is no doubt that the dairy industry is a huge contributor not only to climate change but also to the environmental issues in terms of the huge amount of land that needs to be cleared for dairy farms Cattle for both beef and dairy are responsible for 14.5% of all anthropogenic greenhouse gas emissions according to the FAO out of this various estimates suggest that dairy farming alone contributes almost 4% to global greenhouse gas emissions clearly we need to look closely at our meat and dairy consumption what should we replace dairy with let's have a look Almond milk may seem to be the best option and now makes up to 12% of global milk sales according to Euromonitor. It tastes good and is plant-based. What could go wrong? Well, the carbon created by almond milk is much less than cow's milk at 360 grams per liter versus 1.67 kilograms for 1 liter of semi-skimmed cow's milk. so far so good but here comes the bad news first of all 80% of global almonds are grown in drought afflicted california and it takes 350 to 370 liters of water to produce 1 liter of almond milk that's a lot but then it takes about 628 liters of water to make 1 liter of cow's milk so almond milk is slightly better in terms of water usage but almond has other issues though first of all an inordinate amount of pesticide is used by almond farmers and secondly almonds need bees for pollination so commercial honey bees are taken from one pollination site to another to pollinate california's almonds this exposes them to pesticides and a monoculture environment which is itself fed by deep water wells thousands of bees get sick and die one estimate has highlighted a record 50 billion commercial bee deaths and this point is important for vegans your almond milk is not as vegan as you might think rice milk also requires a lot of water at about 270 liters to make 1 liter and 50% of all diverted water in asia is used for rice flooded rice paddies emit huge amounts of methane and nitrous oxide both of which are major greenhouse gases that contribute 12% of global methane emissions and rice is a pollution spreading crop too still both almond and rice greenhouse gas emissions are nothing compared to cow's milk which are almost 3 times the emissions of any non dairy milks according to a university of oxford study coconut milk has been used in asia for centuries and as demand for non dairy milk products rises It has now also become a trend in western countries. Coconut is a relatively sustainable option mainly because it is harvested by hand and does not require large amounts of water. But due to the rise in demand, 
various ecosystems such as mangrove forests and coastlines are being replaced with co- coconut monoculture a practice harmful to biodiversity soil health and native plant species coconut pickers in countries in, in asia like india and the philippines among others are exploited for their labor and not paid a fair wage and in some countries like india thailand and sri lanka monkeys are trained to harvest coconuts no matter what is said one can never be sure that the animals are treated well and not exploited in fact it is possible that the macaque monkeys are captured from the wild kept in cages or even tied up oat and soy require 48 and 28 liters of water respectively to make 1 liter of milk however soy is the driver behind the deforestation and destruction of south america's cerrado grasslands and the amazon rainforest it emits much less greenhouse gas emissions it emits much less greenhouse gases than cow's milk per se but if you include the increase in emissions due to deforestation the number is much higher in addition such deforestation is extremely detrimental to the local biodiversity so your tofu and your soy latte are not all that environmentally friendly either oat milk is a better option with fewer emissions low water use at 48 liters of water to make 1 liter of milk and also low land use overall it is the most sustainable option at the moment but farmers do spray plants with pesticides before harvest so watch out for that hazelnut milk is also sustainable perhaps more so than all the others and it tastes delicious too it uses much less water and is mainly grown in regions with ample precipitation hazelnut trees also don't need insects for pollination they rely on wind and they have environmental benefits because they are planted to reduce soil erosion and runoff finally they sequester or store more carbon than many other plants there are also less commonly used hemp and pea milk options Hemp products such as fiber are used as environmentally and climate friendly options and it has been considered a food and medicine source throughout history. Hemp milk is made by blending seeds of the cannabis sativa plant with water. It has many environmental benefits such as being good for soil nutrition and reducing soil erosion. However, it does require more water than soy and oats. but less than dairy and almonds one thing to keep in mind is that because it is not consumed as much there is little data on its full environmental impacts a very new contender is pea milk where split yellow pea flour is blended with water to make the milk its benefits are similar to soy in terms of nitrogen fixing low water usage and greenhouse gas emissions The bottom line is that dairy is still the most destructive to climate and the environment. But before you order your almond or soy latte, it makes sense to have further information about their impacts before deciding that they have no adverse effects. Thank you for joining me on 360 on history. I'll see you next time.